In this lesson, we're going to look at arithmetic sequences and we're going to look at the explicit formula. Maybe your teacher has spoken about the explicit formula, but then you also get a different formula called the recursive. We will be looking at that in later videos. So for the explicit formula, well, let's actually talk about what arithmetic sequences are. Arithmetic sequences typically look something like this, 3, 5, 7, 9, and then they can go on and on and on. Or maybe it goes something like 12, 7, 2, negative 3, on and on and on. Now, think about what's happening here. Each time we're adding 2, whoops, don't know what that was, adding 2. In the bottom sequence, we are subtracting 5. So that is what arithmetic is. Arithmetic is when you are either adding or subtracting the same amount each time. That is what arithmetic means. So whenever you are given an arithmetic sequence, then the formula that you are going to use goes like this. So let me explain what each thing represents. A1 represents term 1. D is the difference. So for example, here the difference would be 2, here the difference would be negative 5. N is the term, or let's rather say the position number, position number, and then AN is the value. So for example, in this sequence over here, A1 is 12, because that's term 1. The difference is negative 5, because that's how much we're changing by. If I had to then choose this one over here, then if you had to go use the formula, then an would be the 2, because it's the value. a1 would be 12. The difference would be negative 5. n which is the position, would be position 1, position 2, position 3. So you'd put a 3 over there. Okay, hope that makes sense. Let's try another one quickly. So let's say, for example, I chose this one over here. Then A1 would be 12. The difference would still be negative 5. The position would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And the value would be negative 3. Okay, so can you see where each thing goes? Wonderful, let's go do some examples. So here we have our first example. Let's make sure that it's arithmetic. Well, if we're adding two, then we're adding two, and then we're adding two. So yes, it is arithmetic. Let's go find the formula. So the formula is a n equals to a one plus d. I like to put the d there in the front instead of putting it on the back by the back of the bracket. Now we need to go fill in everything in. So you can't fill anything in for a n. For a one, we know that that's five. The difference is two and then n minus 1 will just leave it like that. Well, the reason we can't fill anything in for n is we don't know which value or which uh, position we're looking at. We're just trying to find the general formula, okay? So if we had to go multiply this out, you'd end up with that. And then if we just had to simplify a little bit, we're going to end up with 3 plus 2n. So this is now the formula that we can use for the rest of the questions. So for question b, it says determine term 214. So you've got to think carefully if we're going to put 214 over here or if we are going to put 214 over here. Well, they're telling us that it's term 214, so it's position 214. So if we go back to our notes, n is the position number. So you're going to put 214 over here, and so you're going to say um, a for term 214 will be 3 plus 2 times that, and then if you had to work this out, you end up with 431. So this would be 431. Now the next one says, which term has a value of 175? Ah, so if we had to keep going, eventually one of these numbers is going to be 175. So if we now go use our formula that we made, then you're going to put the 175 here because this is the value. Okay. But we don't know what position we will be at, so that's why we'll leave that as an unknown. And so now we just need to solve. So I'm going to take the 3 over to the left, so it becomes negative. So we end up with 172 is equal to 2n. Divide both sides by 2, and you end up with 86. So that means that this would be position 86. Okay, let's do another example. So here we can see it's arithmetic because we are subtracting 3 each time. So if we so we know it's arithmetic. So the basic formula 
is um, a n equals to a1 plus d bracket n minus 1. And so we know that a1 represents term 1, which is 20. d is going to be negative 3, and then n minus 1. Now we can just go simplify to become 20 minus 3n plus 3. Because this negative 3 multiplied in, and then multiplied in there. And so if you had to simplify this, it would be 23 take away 3n. And so that's our formula for question A. For question B, determine term 105. So we're going to plug in n as 105. And so that's going to give us negative 292. So that's question B. For question C, which term has a value of negative 115? So let's quickly go write down our formula. So you're going to put negative 115 over here. So you need to become really good at knowing whether you need to plug the number in at n or whether you need to plug the number in at a n. Okay? And so minus 3n. I'm going to take the 3n to the left and I'm going to take the 115 to the right. It will end up becoming a positive. And you'd end up with 3n is equal to 138. Divide both sides by 3. And you end up with 46. For this question, they give us the formula already. So they've already gone and done everything. So now they just say determine term 53. So you need to know, do we put the 53 there or do we put the 53 there? Well, they're telling us that it's term 53. So it's position 53. So that would go here. Okay, so you're going to go plug it like that. And so term 53 would be 215. Now it says... That's for question A. Now, for question B, which term is has a value? Okay, so now they're giving us the value, so that goes here. So for question B, you're going to say 271 is equal to 3 plus 4n, and then you can take the 3 to the left, and then you end up with 268 is equal to 4n, divide both sides by 4, and that's 67. So that means that if you had to um, look at this pattern, and if you had to go all the way to term number 67, the value that you would find there would be 271.